Welcome back. Um, in commemoration of tomorrow, Shogi Harbor doing a chess stream. Today, we're going to do a chess stream, because why not, right? Uh, in fact, I see there's this chess 960 arena thing. It's been a while since I played 960. So let's give it a shot. Um, so one thing to bear in mind in 960 is it's just like normal chess. You just want to get your pieces on good squares. You want to remember to use all the pieces. Um, and a lot of players forget to use all the pieces. Oh. Yeah, initial piece placement is sus. Yep, yep, yep. <laughs> uh, you know, I thought somebody had to make the pun. I'm surprised I'm the first. I really am. Um, so Leech Us just finished their titled arena that was going today, which is quite exciting for all the players involved. And what happens after the titled arena is that nobody streams. So, like, if you want a live stream with lots of viewers, just wait for the end of the titled arena and then go live. So, that's what we're doing. Uh, not subtle at all. Um, but yeah, this uh, game is pretty challenging. Okay, I have to go back because this bishop's actually in the way. Uh, we're going to see if my theory holds or if the one other streamer who's doing activity now is going to hold all the viewers, which wouldn't surprise me, actually, because, like, I'm not titled, and I think they are. So. Well, plus, I haven't hit the front page yet. I've only been streaming a couple minutes. It's going to take a while for my name to flash on the front page. All right, so there is a trap here. They're threatening my pawn. Um, a simple solution, I think... Unfortunately for me, the only solution is my knight has to protect this. Oh, shit. Okay. Um, yeah, my interface stuck a bit because I started Shogi Gui analyzing a game before I went live here. Um, so you can't hear my machine churning in the background, but it's making noise analyzing my last teaching ladder game. Um... So if anything catches fire, like while this stream is ongoing, that's what happened. Um, also, players in this variant, especially in tournaments, tend to be very competitive. You get to fight for every last square on the board against these folks. They don't concede any space at all. Um, Alright, so if I don't take this, all these pieces are going to swarm my king and I get checkmated, so I have to take. But now we start to get decisions about how do we defend this. Unfortunately, most of them are pretty boring decisions, um, which really isn't my MO in general. Um, all right. But yeah, isn't Among Us just, it's such a zany game. I like that there is a mode where it, between rounds, it will not confirm um, who the imposter is, so that becomes like a real strategy game. And I was really amused to see uh, Carl Sagan42 play in it. Um, he was just, he noticed and he knew that um, it's such, I don't know. I mean, in this year of social distance, it is the ultimate online game where you could just make fun of your friends and have a good time. 
but a lot of players take it quite seriously and competitively. And so Carl correctly um, decided to just uh, mess around during the game, like not completing his tasks, chasing around other players, just being a total silly person. I think he is wisest among us all. So. <laughs> hey, what's up? Oh no, he figured out my name. I'm the most discoverable name out there, so. For a while I decided, uh, deliberated trying to go under some kind of pseudonym and realized, you know, that's just not going to work because um, I'm super easily discoverable. So, yeah. Um, <laughs> All right, this is kind of ridiculous. But here I am giving the bishop pair um, for dubious compensation. Yeah. Yeah, no, that's the point. Like, it would be impossible, given my history and all the things I'm involved in, that I could actually stay anonymous. That just is not possible. Could there be value in anonymity? Maybe. But, um... All right. So, we are in it for the long haul. I wish I could keep that guy in place. Unfortunately, it's not quite possible. Um, so, we're going to have to play the extremely long con of trying to generate some activity in an endgame that's otherwise extremely miserable. Um, so that thing I said about players not giving an inch, um, that really doesn't apply to the endgame. Nobody studies the endgame. Consequently, you can get away with a lot of BS. Um, right, so... This is the one thing I have to read. All right, I have to play this. Uh, so, yep, then we have to dance back and forth and pretend everything's okay, even though it's not. This is not the right square for the bishop. This is not the right square for the king. This is not how you play this end game if you're trying to win it, which they're not. Um, So they need the bishop covering this square. This just isolates your bishop for no reason. I mean, I guess a reason is that Maybe if you were to execute a pre-move and I could get g5 in. No, g5 earlier just loses the uh, end game outright. My opponent left the game. I can claim victory in 32 seconds. Also, in that number of seconds, I can call a draw, which is what I should do here. I know there are tournament points on the line. Got to get all those virtual rating points and stuff, but like this end game is not winning for me, not even remotely close. But also my opponent's back, so we don't have to worry about any of that. But yeah, I was gonna claim a draw. Um, oh shit. 
Oops. I missed my chance earlier. Uh, this is terrible. I probably missed multiple chances earlier. Oh, well, check that out. We've got an endgame on our hands, boys. Shit, G5's the move. I'm mad at myself for messing that up. I'm supposed to know this stuff. Alright. I am mad. Alright, well, good game. Can I check G5? Well, then we wouldn't get to our next game. But feel free to go to the interface, go look at my last game, summon it, and see whether or not G5 loses. Um, I'm convinced it does, but feel free to check it. Leave that as homework for the student. There's even a button there you can just push that analyzes the game with the engine for you and points out all my mistakes. I see we have a challenge, but um, we're in a tournament? <laughs> uh, a 2800 rated bot wants to play. Hmm, let me consider... No, not happening. All right. Um, well, that was fast. Um, yeah, so like I was saying... Uh, playing the boring stuff is not my M.O. This looks like the most exciting way I can open this game. So, this is how we play. Um, though it does seem to be losing material. Oops. Uh, okay. Yeah, I'll just go back. All right, you got a pawn. Congratulations. I'm attacking this. See, they say don't bring your queen out early, and that's why. Okay, so... Apparently G5 is not losing, and I just don't know end games. Uh huh. Didn't know that. All right, this bishop is in front of this pawn. Man, I want to do the queenside castle, but they're not making it easy. There we go. Um, all right. So one, two are attacked. I'm moving much too quickly for this time control, but we're having fun. Um, we're having way too much fun. All right, screw it. It's not sound, but I'm playing this anyway because I still have this free knight. And if he takes my pawn, I take the bishop, etc. Like, this gets fairly crazy. Um, I'm not in the mood to exchange everything right now.
Right, so they protect their knight. Uh, in so doing, I can take this bishop and pretend that I can run back. Whether or not I can actually escape that way, they have to think about it. Or not think and just take it. Um, so yeah, we've got the bishop pair temporarily. Uh, more importantly, we have a castle. And our bishop controls the light squares. So if I can just put my pawn here, we'll be fine. And how can I say that? Well, here's the plan. Um, all right, if I move my queen here, knight, knight, uh, it's okay. Their best idea is this. Well, no, my bishop covers that. So I can take this. And they cannot easily break open my queen side while I threaten to smash their king side to pieces. Interesting. Um, hmm. This is one of those strange positions where my pieces will dominate theirs. At least I hope so. Um, All right, we're going to execute the plan. It might be flawed. It could be fatally flawed, but... Oh, yeah, it's fatally flawed. Whoops. All right, well played. Uh, 1582 just beat me. Well played. Oh, hey, check it out. I actually knew an endgame. I knew it. All right, so we're just going to pretend this is a normal chess game and play our usual BS, um, which is pretty fun. We're going to play a modern. Um... Oh, hang on. I'm actually threatening a thing. All right. Do I grab the bait? Sure. Let's do it. What's the worst that could happen? I guess they could castle. They should castle while I'm just grabbing pawns. Hmm. 
I was thinking I could blockade here, but that's kind of optimistic. Yeah, I should have looked closer at that. Uh, because now... Um, if I castle to the left, I'm in trouble. Because his knights and bishop and queen all point this direction. So I have to castle to the right. Um. On the bright side, this bishop's not going anywhere. <laughs> So, there's that. Yeah, and last, or that first game, I was extremely tempted to push g5 and to make a big showing of it, explaining, like, here I need to bid for activity because my position's worse, and therefore I have to lash out and do something crazy. But, um, turns out it was just such a bad move that, like, it didn't merit further consideration. Despite me, despite me very much wanting to play it, it just was not viable. Hang on. Hang on. We've trapped a knight. This is good. So, we've lined up our cannon here. So yeah, they can't um, take en passant because then we do pawn takes. And just this cascade of tactics goes off. But also, they're trying to save the knight this way. Um, I've got that covered, too. Boom. Headshot. All right. This is still risky, because I've not castled yet. Probably should do that before putting my pieces in harm's way. Um. Well. Should, but that's not how we play. So we're going to play the exciting move. Um. Okay, my queen is safe here. Well, no, they have rook d4. That's pretty unusual. But what I'm reading here is like some idea where I get to take this bishop somehow. Um, but it's never going to come to that because I get to castle now. Uh, I get to castle, but also have this fun move. I've trapped their queen. Uh, let's do it. Trap is kind of not the right word, because this is a queen exchange. But um, if I'm up a piece, exchanging queens is pretty nice. Oh, incidentally, this means if I castle, this loses the bishop. Because the king, when it castles, is not going to land on this square, but it's going to land on c8. Yeah. Let's see. Endgame book recommendation. Sorry, uh, I missed a few comments. Um... Uh... So you're asking for a book recommendation. Um, I'm trying to remember. Um, so I... Um, I guess... I'm trying to not confuse authors who have written various books. 
Um, I'm going to drop uh, this pawn. That's okay. So, um, it wasn't Nun, was it? Who wrote this, like, seven-part endgame manual? Was that Nun? I'm trying to remember. It's been a year or two since I la re uh, last read a chess book. Yeah, I got Dvoretsky recently. Uh, I recently purchased a copy of that. Um, that's going to be brutal, man. Uh, I've read lots of Endgame books. I don't know. I mean, Sierra One did at least a couple, I think. Those were decent. It really depends if you're looking for something... Um, like what your level is, and whether you're interested in studying like the encyclopedia of chess endgames, which is just like this enormous table of all the positions with various material configurations. Um, uh, it's quite a challenging read. Um, it's kind of like a table base. Um, chances are you're looking for something that has English in it and not just a ton of positions. Um, if that's what you seek, then... I don't know, ask me about books, and I'll tell you whether I've heard about them or not. Um, that's probably going to work better than me trying to remember what the last book I read was. A yeah, hundred end games you must know is well known. Uh, Chessable course is probably pretty good. Um, um, yeah. I did create a team on Lee Chess. Um, called it the End Game Church. Basically, because of everybody on Lee Chess, I am the player most obsessed with endgames. Um, just like, if you throw a random endgame configuration in front of me, I'll make some estimation as to like which side's better. Boom! Headshot. Alright, study your endgames. Alright, so, uh, what else did I miss? Uh, the Polgar book, even though it's not strictly about endgames, is a good exercise and calculation. Um, Alright, this game is so confusing. They put all the pieces on the wrong squares again. It's only going to take them, well, on average... Uh, what's 960 over 2? It's not 480, is it? Yeah, 480 attempts on average to get this set up correctly. Well, that's cl clever. This is the only intelligent response to it, I think. Oh, uh, no, that doesn't work. All right, you don't get to castle. Um... <clears throat> And then we just try to play normal chess game. E4. Alright. Uh, my favorite endgame player, aside from Capablanca. Oh, boy. Oh. Uh, this is rough. Um, I'm just going to say Lasker, because why not? I mean, there's so many good grandmasters that are also strong at the endgame. Um... I think Benko used to run a column in Chess Life, um, where he would sometimes feature endgames. So Benko's pretty cool, too. Um, everybody knows that, like, well, yeah, Fisher had a way of being good at endgames. 
uh, Carlson is even better. Um, all right, we're gonna. Uh, this is fine. Nakamura's obviously good. All right. Wait, I don't need to protect that pawn twice. Um. Oh wait, um, no, it's just today I was watching a Grandmaster Friedel uh, giving lectures on a Scholastic event that was going on on Lee Chess this morning. Um, and he's written so many good materials, um, but also, hang on while I collect my thoughts. But also, like, his live stream commentary is excellent. Um, so, yeah, I was amazed to see Friedel uh, online. Uh, just because he is such a high-profile author. So that was exciting. I think I saw him online yesterday, too. Um. All right, night is sus. Yeah, Fisher had that one bad end game. And I'd be happy if that's what he were remembered by, but um no, he's actually uh he showed the power of two bishops against various other combinations of pieces. Like, he was ruthless almost as much as Capablanca, except in an era where opponents are playing very well. Um, he was still quite good. Just crazy. There we go. Oh, man, he defended it. He saw my threat. Or I even made it. Oh yeah, Karpov. Oh my god, how could I not remember that? But yeah, basically just name your contemporary top grandmasters. And world champions, and those are the ones who excel at end games. Um, I mean, I make the joke in my Lee Chess team that you can opportunistically salvage any position if you just study the end game, but it's true. So, if you study end games, you will win close games. It's that easy. Um, just need to spend forever looking at every endgame possible, learn them all, and then outplay your opponents. Um, I mean, you could see, like, in the U.S. Women's Championship, when top U.S. women players mess up endgames. They're not easy, but this decides championships. That's the state that such tournaments are in right now. And then you have, like, uh, Grandmaster commentators offering their opinions based on trying to read the engine output with a table base or without a table base. Either way, um, they try to read it and um, come up with different results than what actually occurs in the game. And so I have to make a little bit of fun at the Grandmaster when he reads the engine and it tells him one thing and then it contradicts itself later and he has to try to reinterpret things. Uh, that's good fun. Um, this is why you can't fully place trust in technology no matter how good the technology is. You have to have like actual engineers to interpret that stuff. 
Uh, or you have to like train people to some degree of certification and proficiency with it. And it's just not easy. Um, which is more gratifying? You know? Oh, gosh. That is a difficult question. Um. Ah. Uh, given that I've put some degree of... <laughs> well, okay. I guess the only way I can answer this is by how much of time I've spent on each. Um, I haven't done enough shogi endgame study um, to really appreciate it. I've put in a ridiculous amount of time studying chess endgames. Um, like, there's not a way to explain that. Um, I've just put in way, 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 way too much effort studying chess and games. Um, and I find that rewarding. But would everybody find that rewarding? I'm not sure. Um, all right, so... Uh, do, do, do. This is tricky. Well... I fucked up. All right. I guess I'm in a situation where I know that chess endgame study is rewarding. I don't really know yet whether shogi endgame study is rewarding or not, because I haven't done enough of it. Um... Yeah, no, I've studied a lot of uncommon endgames. Um, like, I think the US Chess Live server used to have studies or exercises for king and uh, king versus rook and two pawns, which is even less common than king versus rook and pawn. Um, I studied that. <laughs> See? You gotta know the tricks here. Like the play for activity. Activity's almost always worth the pawn. It's impossible for him to, like, break down this side of the board. Alright. Uh, I have to take this now. And we have to agree to a draw. Uh, on account of me having no time left. Uh, I can't take that. There we go. Oh, proper primitive technique is to have the king on g7? Really? That's interesting. All right, so there's five minutes and some change left on the tournament clock. If we're going to try to maximize our tournament standing, I need to go berserk for an extra point. And hopefully our opponent will grace us with the same. Here we go. All right. Um, this is super unwise, especially because I don't know this position. Yep. So we're going for the extra point, which isn't going to matter because this game won't finish before the tournament clock runs out. Um, but we can pretend it will. All right. We're setting up the tactic, guys. Here we go. Unfortunately, he's got the same idea, so we're going to set up a different tactic.
I mean, it's ridiculous. It doesn't achieve anything if he's paying attention, but um, we can pretend it was still good. It's really all distraction. But it does bring him to question himself as to like what he's doing here. Sorry, I'm a bit distracted by the game. We'll get to chat later. Hey, game's over. All right, chat time. Yeah, <laughs> pre-move Kui takes H7. <laughs> so optimistic, right? <laughs> uh... See, you just make consecutive threats, in the words of Grandmaster Komarov. Just keep threatening stuff, and eventually the opponent will miss something. That's just how it works, at least in speed chess online, particularly this site. Oh, come on, really? No berserk. All right, I see how it is. Fine. We're going to lose this game on time. Well, maybe we're not going to lose on time. Maybe we can lose some other way. So this kind of blocks their queen. That's my plan, is to set this up. Bring my other rook over. And just really limit the scope of their queen. Meanwhile, this is a free pawn. But I can't... Well, taking it's risky. Um, I'm going to see if they put their rook on the file. as they should, but this indicates that they're going to give up the pawn, or that they're just going to be a jerk and go back and forth.
interesting. Um, my bishop's not that great. So this is what we call a pin. Although if my knight takes, it ends up in a pin. Um, so we're going to do this to break the pin on the knight. So we're going to move here. And he's going to take our pawn. And we take his pawn. And our knight dominates the bishop. Except I get mated, so this is not the brightest plan ever. There's always another detail to consider. Um, fine. Let's play with fire. All right, this is a terrible end game. Can we salvage it? Probably not, but we can try. Yeah, I guess we could go back over the game afterward and see exactly how I blundered it. Um, that's possible. All right, you got me. I was trying to be tricky. Um, all right, I guess people want me to look and find my blunder, so we'll do that. Um, so we didn't lose on time. I was right that, like, yeah, we could find another way to lose. Um, I missed that this uh, was critical. Usually there's something to defend that point, or the king itself can hold that for a turn. Um, apparently the engine didn't like my b5 move, and so I just should have just defended the pawn. But after pawn takes... Oh, queen takes is check. I didn't even see queen takes. Certainly didn't see that it was check. Um, so... There's still two targets on this line, but somehow apparently this all works out. Uh, yeah. And then, like, if they do rook b1, which is the suggested move, then knight e3 is the move that holds it all together. So I kind of missed this. Uh, if they take my queen, I take their queen. 
and rook c6 takes my pawn. But no, if they take my queen, that's the easy line. What if they refuse somehow? Um, like, what about this? Hitting this rook. Um, I guess my queen defends the knight, so some sort of tactic where they try to defend or attack this knight doesn't succeed because this knight's not trapped and it's attacking other stuff. Um, I guess also there's like no queen h6 trick here. Like, if they could play queen here and I had to move here or something, and then, like, this somehow could be lethal. Um, but that somehow does not work here. Don't ask me how. Um, let's ask the engine. Queen d4. All right. Oh, so I guess, yeah, if rook b4... And queen takes, queen takes, and although this is threatened, there, this could be interpolated. Therefore, instead of that, normally you would try rook d1, except the knight, well, the knight can't take it here. Um, so on knight there, you'd have to play queen here. And then on rook b7, you could still take this, because there's still this being covered. So it's that, like... Um, move from 29 to 35. It's this combination that's like seven moves by each player. I didn't read that out properly. I was afraid something bad was going to happen if I tried leaving too many pieces attacked at once, but it all works out. Also, I didn't see the check in the first place, so... I was so fixated on let me attack something like this bishop or knight, or bishop or rook, or this pawn, or let me attack something. wasn't really thinking about the queen hitting the king. Although here, it's the only move. Um, but yeah, things got to this point because I played a4 against my better judgment. Should have just taken here. Um, I was concerned that this is too drawish. Um... Well, I mean, the engine eval after c4 is that I'm 2.6 better. So somehow this is actually quite good for me. Um. Oh, wait. Am I... no, this doesn't mate. How in the world is this good for me? It looks pleasing and pleasant, but I'm not sold. Knight g2. Knight d7 was the engine's recommendation. Queen g4 is also recommended. I don't understand why this is better for me. I mean, yeah, I'm up a pawn or something like that, and their pawns are kind of split. Let me count the pawns. So I've got four on the, this side. They've got three. And it's three to three on this side, although this one might drop. Engine prefers my side here. I really don't. Um, not without some concrete justification explaining like how I get out of this. Queen g4... Rook takes, rook takes, queen d3, knight d7, there's the move. So although my queen's the only piece defending this, and my queen could be scared pretty easily, um, evidently my attack is better than my opponent's here, which is crazy. Because their next move is queen d5, and okay... Queen e6 defends that. And then they split all my pawns. And they're still threatening stuff like this. But my knight has this under lock and key. It would take too long for them to get the rook up and over. This is insane, but this evidently is how I should have played it. Alright, on Lee Chess, the eval oscillates more than in Stockfish 9. Um, yeah, I'm not sure. 
it would take some study for me to understand exactly what that all means. Um, so, um, I don't know, should we pick a tournament? Let's see, there's the Ultra Bullet Arena. Wait, there's a thematic thing going on? The King's Gambit Rapid. We could play maybe a game or two here, right? See if we understand the King's Gambit. I wonder if this is the mainline King's Gambit or some sub-variation of it. Guess we'll find out. Um, Mango says, hey. I say, hey. All right. Thought Stockfish is very in intense and opinionated, to use human terms. <laughs> yeah, I was like, wait, that's interesting. Um, all right. Maybe new versions are better at conversion or aggressive or something. Um, yeah, I was analyzing a 960 game I had just played. Yes. Ooh. All right. Um, let's take the pawn and pretend that we know this. D5. All right. This is how you play the King's Gambit, right? And we bring out the knight. I think I've confused my opponent. I think they were expecting something different. And then we play c6. And we gambit a pawn. Yeah, I wonder, there's a couple layers to this uh, engine analysis problem. Um, so, let me think here. I actually have to find a good move once in a while, otherwise it gets boring. So, yeah, there's the conventional analysis without all the neural network stuff that's new to Stockfish 12. And then there's uh, all the neural network stuff on top of that, which um, is a black box, and we don't understand it very well just yet. We know that it gains ELO, but we don't have a sense for exactly what that means in terms of how the evaluation looks what you would characterize um, the engine as in terms of human personality. And curiously, that also could mean that maybe different neural networks have different personalities. You never know. Um, but yeah, back to the original problem. Wait, I almost trapped the queen while just monologuing on neural networks. That's pretty funny. Um, so I think this is my idea. Pretty sure that's my idea. Yep, we're doing it. All right, so... Yeah, I don't really know how to characterize the engine. Um, obviously, if there are search defects, those are being fixed with every release, and noob defects are being introduced, because that's just how software goes. Um, hmm. All right, we're going to hold this pawn and give back the original Gambit pawn. So now we're down a pawn. 
if they take, maybe I take the knight and then knight h5. Gains a tempo. Um, knight g4 might also gain a tempo. Maybe I should just castle here, like a sane person might do. Yeah, this way we could use the rook in some sort of attack. And check. Just in time. You can tell which chess streamer you are watching by the mouse movement. Oh yeah, well what happens if I enable keyboard move entry? Huh? Then what? How do you know it's me? <laughs> uh, but yeah. It wouldn't surprise me that each uh, person has a different um, mouse movement. Also, you could tell which streamer it is, you know, based on this, like, cyan and green neon thing going on. Chances are, that's me. <laughs> um, just say it. But, yeah, in general, you're probably right. All right, so I'm debating knight g4, knight e3, and debating queen e7. Queen e7 uses a new piece. Let's do it. In the current streamer pool, that's true, yeah. Some knockoff might try to take my style and appropriate it to themselves. They'd have a good sense of style if they did so. All right. Fine. Here. You want another pawn? Okay, they don't want another pawn. I thought I could, you know, can uh, persuade them to take it. Maybe now they want it. hit this. If they take here, I take the bishop. They take here, I check. And then they do knight takes back here if we have to. But we probably have better. So these are the squares I care about. One, two, three, four. Because this one is kind of important. See, I only had to give up one pawn to get this kind of attack. Um, and since we're playing for an audience, uh, we're playing all the crazy stuff. So I keep the rook stuck in the corner. And maybe we bring this in. I don't know. I'd like to use this knight, but sense that it's going to be too late to the party. Uh. All right, so I have three pieces attacking this square. Uh, I guess a way they could... Well, they could play knight g1 to defend it a third time, and then I take on g2. Oh, this is brutal. And then, like, the only thing they can use to attack my queen would be this. And I just take. And I win a piece. Easy. Not really, because, like, then they hit my knight. Things get complicated, but, you know, for one glorious moment, we could pretend things are great. Um, all right. Uh, I guess we'll go with the simple move, right? Huh, there's actually not a simple move here. I thought there was. Oh, wait a sec. Bishop takes knight. That's kind of simple. Yeah. There we go. Because I have this square defended. My knight protects that. 
Knights can go forward or sideways. Um, yeah. So this sets up a threat of taking here and then taking here and promoting to a knight. Or, you know, any other piece. Um, so the pawn takes here would be mate unless they play the bishop back. But, yeah, this... They have to take here, basically. Queen takes, queen takes. Yeah, I'm not sure. I'm not totally convinced on that point. You might be right, but I was not so sure about that. Um, so yeah. Instead, here I've got control of this square. And I can just keep attacking. Um, there we go. I think I saw some tricky tactic whereby that wasn't necessarily winning a knight because I have to escape from it. Like, my knight gets trapped after it captures. Yeah, rook takes... maybe... Rick takes is interesting. I just saw that like here they have two pawns, I have a knight, and my attack is still going. But no, you're right, there's probably a wide diversity of good moves here. Um, especially if we have a generous opponent. Oh no, my rook! Okay. Ah, uh, good game. Okay, good game. Seriously, that was decent. <laughs> uh, truth be told, I didn't even see that my rook was hanging. But then, like, when the opportunity arose there, um, you know, I thought it was amusing. Did I consider, yeah, queenie one? Yes, I did consider it. You're supposed to consider captures and checks. Uh, ropes to, by the way, here... I believe is one of the developers or at least a frequent player at leedrafts.org. Spelled Lee Droughts. Uh, L I D R A U G H T S. Uh, that's a international checkers site. I believe he's one of the main developers there. All right. Is he going to take my pawn? Can I play Bishop C? No! Ah! Mm. I'm going to play this anyway. You can't stop me. Okay, this is just ridiculous. I know I play crazy openings, but that's my thing. You can't take that from me. Here. You want crazy openings? We're going to play a crazy opening. Everything's going to hang at the once. How about that? I debated B5 here for a second. You know what? For the fans, we're doing B5. This loses a rook and a knight. Um, so, enjoy. He didn't take it! What planet are we playing on? <sighs> okay. I I don't know what we're ga what game we're playing anymore. Um Hmm. Okay. Uh the streamer has broken. So I'm debating bishop a3, trying to keep his king in the center. It seems thematic at any rate. Right. So now we've trapped a knight. 
All right, so against this, I'm pretty sure the book move is bishop f1. No, okay. Um, I mean, it's got to be, right? There's no justice in the chess world if bishop f1 is not a thing here. But, yeah, c'est la vie, there is no justice in chess. We're just going to play back here. Um, oh, that would be dangerous. You know what, we're playing it anyway. We've never been one to play the safe moves. There we go. We're gambiting a bishop. Really, this has just been a contest to see who could play the more ridiculous opening moves. I think I've won. I might not be winning the game, but I'm winning the long con of just getting the reputation as the dubious opening streamer. There we go. Alright, so my queen's under attack. I don't have a way to hit their queen right now. Let's just put our queen in a nice central square. And just then bring our invisible bishop to d3 and mate on h7, right? All right. Um... Note, this still prevents them from castling. So it's not all for naught. Also, like, I've got this ridiculous pawn phalanx. We built Yagra over here, I think is what it's called, right? Um, the fortress. Okay. Um, King F7, exclamation point. g4 we are gonna gambit some pawn on this flank even if it ruins my entire position to do so we're gonna do that so we can castle and not go through check while we're castling and now our king's safe see we got the yakra everything's okay uh i mean yeah ostensibly they're threatening to win our rook but they're not actually going to follow up on that threat. All right, so... I think at this point... Yeah, we're going to develop the rook. The king on f7 was too strong. Yeah, he's given up the light squares. What a chump. No. <laughs> uh, you have activated my trap card. <sighs> All right. I mean, but seriously, like, we're down six points at the moment, but we've got compensation. Um, can't believe everything the engines tell you.
See, the bishop still achieves a meaningful purpose on a3. My bishop a3 was an ingenious uh, move. And we're still working on realizing just how smart it was. Um... Unfortunately, like, I think queen h4 might put my shenanigans to an end. Um... Well, hang on. No, I have queen f3 then. And they have to block with the knight. So queen h4 is not the move. He says. All right. So now, if king g5, there's bishop e7. And if king g6, there's queen... Well, there's not queen f7. Um, just kidding. But there's, like, rook g2, right? See? To take a quote from the llama lord, I'm a genius. Alright, what chat have I missed? Oh, okay. Well, yes. That's a move. Uh, <laughs> Unfortunately, I still have to win the game. not enough to just claim that I have a victorious position. I actually have to demonstrate it. So this dominates the knight. I think we have a plan, guys.
I have to remember that pawns don't protect this way. Several times already this game, I've considered variations where I just put my queen in front of my pawn and claim that it's defended. Pawns move differently in this game than they capture. All right. Um, I really want to promote again. Just doesn't quite cut it. There we go. This is how we convince our opponent to take our queen. So what, Fisher once had a game where he had three queens on the board, right? Or was that just in a variation? It never happened in the game. I think it was like Fisher versus Tall, and he had three queens and Tall had two queens or something. I don't remember. But the material configuration was very strange, is the point. All right, my opponent's attempting to get stalemated and forgetting that they have a pawn. So... Even if their king gets trapped, um, the pawn still can move. I was going to joke that, you know, if my opponent just, like, does nothing, I just take another queen. Um, Oh, Fisher Petrosian. Yeah, that sounds right. Man, I said we could play a couple games, but this is so addicting. This is addicting because I could play absolute nonsense. And if I'm paired with a player under 2,000, um, I get to see how they try to refute it. It's actually quite exciting. All right, so this is a legitimate line, but an unpopular one. Um, most people just take the pawn. But yeah, this is a legitimate way to respond to the gambit. So for once, I'm playing decent moves. Yeah, I've seen, like, takes and then pawn takes f4. That's not legitimate. <laughs> um, that's a way to lose. All right, can I just take this now? I don't remember. If I do this, bishop check, pawn c6, knight takes, queen takes, queen takes, and I'm down a queen. Uh, knight takes, pawn takes, bishop. And they've got a knight in the center of the board. This is not very bright. So better, even if knight takes d5 as possible, better is bishop b4. Uh, and we just castle right into the attack. And everything's fine. Okay. <laughs> uh, yes, that's legal. Um, yeah, no, you can double your pawns. I don't understand the meaning that's intended by doubling the pawns, but I'm sure there's some advantage to it somehow. 
It does keep my knight out of d4. I guess that's an advantage. It does prevent me from trying to win back the bishop pair. Um, here, you can even have my other bishop. We're just going to give up the bishop pair and give him double doubled pawns and see if he can generate an attack. Um, I'm going to try to make it interesting. So this bishop on e3 is undefended. Okay, this looks interesting. If bishop d3, maybe knight, or bishop takes f3 might be possible. But we don't go there. Instead, we end up here. And I develop my other piece. So all of my pieces have moved at this point. Um... Since we're playing for an audience, we're going to play the sack. Is it sound? We'll find out. <laughs> it's not sound. All right. Um, fine. See how it is. We don't want to have any fun today. So rook d8 might be possible. It really depends what they do next. Like knight e5 is kind of exciting, um, which of course did not happen because that was too exciting. Um, we're just going to ask for more trouble. Yeah, the teal arrows. It's a user style that somebody put on to, or you're able to enable with Stylus, the open source user style plugin for the browser. Um. All right, so we're going to cut that bishop off so it can't do anything. My opponent does have a material advantage and is going to convert that and just win. But we can pretend that we had an attack. Um, if we have good endgame skills, maybe we can even save this endgame. Changed one of your colors to black arrows and made the rest a different... Oh, that's a way to do it, too. Um, I'm not opposed to a draw because I'm down material here. Let's claim it. All right, good game. Well, that ends my winning streak. 
Maybe... Well, that shows me for just playing a decent opening, right? What was my opponent's rating? I didn't catch that. Uh, 1700. Alright. I'll take it. Then made the rest a different shade of their existing colors. Yeah, that's kind of a nice way to make it look. No more yellow arrows or yellow circles, just black. Yeah, I was debating playing d5c6. I just couldn't remember if that was a legit line, or if I have to play knight f6 before c6, or, like, how that goes. Um, it's more legit than what? Oh, 3e4. Yeah, that doesn't surprise me. The first time I saw e4, I found it quite repulsive. I still do. Um... All right, just for the sake of the meme, got to keep the meme alive. All right, this is like super busted, but yeah, nobody knows this, myself included. So this should be good. I just know that like, I tried to refute this once, and it's not easy to refute. So, yeah, we're getting a game. Um, somewhat pity my opponent for being thrown into this mess. Um, I don't remember what to do. Yeah, I like the story behind the game. Like, the whole notion of being in space, and... Like, the whole narrative is amazing. The concept of the game is great. Um, the fact that you can actually parameterize the games to make it somewhat fun, somewhat challenging is okay. Um, but the way most of the time that it's played with the default settings, I guess is beginner friendly, but might not make for the greatest like str strategy game content, strategic content. I don't know. Um, So, yeah, like, the notion that there is one dominant strategy is a bit concerning. And that's, like, well, I could spoil that, but, um, but yeah, if you're playing with the default settings, there is a way that the imposter should negotiate. Uh... Although I do find it, like, really amusing um, just watching players get all upset at each other as they deceive each other. That's pretty funny. Yeah, it's like Mafia with extra steps. Oh. Okay. Guess we're doing a sacrifice. Yep. We're putting in... Even more effort than no joke, apparently. <laughs> uh, yeah. Like, oh, hey, check that out. I sacrificed a piece. Hmm. That wasn't in, on purpose. All right, well, if we call it a sacrifice, it's got to be okay, right? Yeah, it's an exchange sack. It's just one that accelerates his attack and doesn't give me anything. Other than that, um, hey, look, I can grab a pawn. We're going to go pawn hunting now. Because I want to give my opponent something to think about. Uh, so this is an idea now that we've broken their fortress. All right.
Oh, I blocked my knight. This is the best square for the queen, but it's also the best square for the bishop and the best square for the knight. Hmm. That's a problem. I'm just running out of squares for my pieces. And now castle, and everything's just fine. Yeah. If only we could. Castling is broken. They need to release a patch. Like, I should be able to castle here. My king's not in check. There's no pieces between the king and the rook. And the rook hasn't moved. So where's the problem? They need to patch the rules. Just for my position. Okay. This makes no sense to me. I mean, if I take that improves their pawn structure. You know how we said we need to castle. Well, guess which way we're castling. <laughs> Oh my gosh. I can't believe it, but like, this is the safest place for my king at the moment. Um, Alright, so now taking doesn't really help their pawn structure anymore. Um, do I take en passant? Just get my king mated? Nah, let's not. Alright, see? We're just gonna castle. The long way. The extra long castle. I mean, I'm offering the pawn if he really wants it. He doesn't want it. Alright. I can't blame him. Uh, <laughs> Probably should have done this last move. And we've got tactics. So if knight takes, bishop takes, knight takes, heck if I know what's going on next. Well, king here, knight takes, king there. They attack my bishop. Maybe I retreat my bishop, and the knight still has to run away, and then knight g4. I still have protected past pawn that's going nowhere just yet. Um, knight h5 is potentially an idea, except with our knight on g7, it's not yet doable. Yep, so this is forced. Now I'm forced to decide, do I go king e6, giving up my g-pawn? Well, actually, they might move the rook. No, they shouldn't, but they could. So do I defend my pawn, or do I chase the knight? If I chase the knight, either they attack my bishop or they move their knight. Um, I'm not trapping the knight, so there's... No motive for me to chase it. So we're going to protect our g-pawn. This one pawn is my castle, and it's going to hold everything together. Um, okay. Uh, back we go. Fun stuff as possible. Making room for my other knight. See, we're down in exchange, but that doesn't mean that the fun's over. It should mean that. Like, they should just play king g1 here. 
and everything's fine. Instead, we have tactics. Um, interesting. Wait. So I avoided bishop c4 earlier because their knight could chase my bishop. Now they've availed themselves of this knight e5 possibility. Uh, so bishop goes back forward. Until such time that they circle their knight around, like, back into e3 or something. Um... Again, King G1's the move if they want the madness to end. Uh, they don't. Alright, do I sack? No, if I give it my E pawn, it's all over. Um, okay, we're going to do this. Maybe I do knight takes h3 if I'm really crazy. Because I do get almost three pawns for it. Not quite. No. That's going to be a move for a different game. Or maybe a different move in the same game. Uh, shit. This is complicated. This is super complicated. Everything is just barely holding together. But if I play this, it'll be a little more solid. Um, or if I play knight f6, that should also hold. Oh. Okay, yeah, that's fine. But also, um, I guess welcome. We're just playing the king's gambit, you know? That position where white's king is super safe until it's not. And where black's king is never safe, but black has material. Um, So this is my threat. I'm not sure if it's any good. But boy, would it be nice if knight takes, rook takes, and then rook f3 was somehow worked out. Yeah, still doing it. We're going to gambit all the kings. Uh, interesting. Man, he's seeking to play crazier moves than I am. That's quite an achievement. Um, unfortunately, at some point, I have to end the madness and just start collecting material. Also, well, I dominate the bishop, but I'm not so interested.
Knights are tricky pieces. You think they're bad in shogi. You should just see what knights can do in chess. Although his knight uh, defends this. So really, this is the only threat. Um, so we're going to stop. Rook takes here check. So now that there's no more check, uh, there's nothing for me to worry about. One, two, three. Ah, ah, ah. All right. Uh, so, yep. I can only take one piece at a time, unfortunately. So let's take this one first. Um, White is sus. So. Yeah, forking that many pieces is not any more effective. It just makes good uh, for good video content. Um, but yeah, it's there's really no point at that point. Because you can only take one piece at a time. So my bishop has this covered. Therefore, well, that's cute. Uh, hang on. I thought I had this score covered. I don't. Mm-hmm. Okay, yeah, I don't actually profit with a knight check, so we're going to do this instead. And that's game. Typical King's Gambit. You just trade off all the pieces and you get an end game. Easy. So we have a challenge from uh, an unlimited standard game challenge for Tort won a tour. Um, if I even pronounced that right, which I'm sure I didn't. It's even got like the little envelope that shows like, um, yeah, that this is a correspondence game. I don't know if that really looks like an envelope or a mailbox or something. I'm not sure what that's supposed to be. All right. Am I going to get to play Bishop C4 this tournament ever? There we go. Bishop C4. Um, trying to encourage Queen H4. Of course, the opponent knows that Queen H4 is not doable. Of course, we transpose to just normal stuff. Fine. I refuse to transpose. We're going to play something dubious. Now we're talking. 
Um, do I play h3 here? Is that a dubious enough move? Okay, I'm going to hit this pawn. Yeah. Yeah, you have to wait like a month for an abandoned correspondence game to get cleaned up. It just sits there forever. Um... I was curious whether uh, the interface would accept king drop on rook if I have my preference set to king g1. Turns out if you have your preference set to king g1, you can't enter the move both ways. Um, check. Alright. Um, I'm going to gambit another... Wait, this isn't a gambit. I've actually got this defended. I'm just going to win. Okay. Well, we could do that. Um, there's not a very good way for them to break this pin. And then I could set up another pin. Right. Oh, hang on. Now I'm actually gambiting this. Yes, we got to gambit. All right. Yeah, queen d2 could have been interesting. Probably. Uh oh. Well, that's interesting. Um. How many squares? Fr uh, from how many squares can they attack this bishop? I wonder. So there's this one, this one, this... How many squares do I have covered? Um, I've got this covered. So, yep. Um, I see a square they could attack it from. Now the problem is, after I take this bishop, um, they can gang up on my queen that might be trapped, and I might have to sack it for two rooks, but that's checkmate. Never mind, that's not a problem. Um, the other problem is that if they play like back here, they still threaten this square. So I can't really take the bishop because of this. Uh... Well, yeah, no, that's a perpetual check at best, and probably it's more painful than that. But with the queens over there, I can start some kind of attack, like this and back and hit the queen or something. Uh, I think he saw b4. I don't think he saw a4. So the threat is just a5 trapping the queen. All right, take care. Just started BS in computer science. Um, let's see, any advice? Well, uh, the science, like the study of like the actual hard math behind the topic, um, is certainly one thing. Uh, but the relationships you build with people you work with and projects you work on are probably more valuable than anything you're going to learn in a classroom. Um, so, I guess, um, uh, from that perspective, I would recommend, um, hang on one second, I need to find a move here. Um, yeah, I would just recommend working on a variety of different projects, uh, make the most of the resources you have available to you there.
Um, also, if you're passionate about something, study it. Um, maybe it's kind of hard to figure what you care most about. I'm not sure. Also, I guess, like, online sorts of... Um, like, if you are... Oh, I'm sorry, you're doing a BS, not like an MS or beyond. You might do that at some point. But if you, like, are studying advanced studies, um, I guess keep in mind, like, what sorts of things will attract grant proposals. Um, I guess not everybody knows that. But people... I guess, and keep, I don't know, keep track of what subjects are popular. Um, I guess some people, like, ask what language they should use for programming, and computer science really isn't about programming. It's about figuring out um, what is possible and how, what does it take to achieve things using a computer. It, in the same way that, like, physical science of, like, physics as a study of like real world phenomena and how do things work and that there was some degree of experimentation to figure all these things out. Uh, computer science is just the physics for computers. It's just um, what do we know about computers and um, some programs operate faster than others. Some programs take more memory, more other resources. Certain techniques can be used to make programs function better or worse. Um, so. Oh, yeah. Now that's good. Yeah. It's good to have opportunities. Um, I did do uh, some summer research program during my undergrad. Uh, get to work directly with uh, grad students and even a professor in a lab. Uh, so that was exciting. Um, I was not the most qualified person in the entire group. Everybody else in the group had more expertise than I did. So that was a bit overwhelming, but um, it's good to have the experience anyhow. Gonna protect the square. Um, yeah, I sense that my opponent wants a draw right out of the opening. They're not playing the most sharp stuff. So we're gonna try to liven it up and it's gonna go horribly. And then we'll blame our opponent for it being boring. Okay, finally they play something exciting, but it's not correct. So I'm hitting these squares, they have to retreat. Um, Yeah. Oh wow, Stay Healthy Bot reminds me I should have my water. I forgot to pour that out before my stream. Um... But yeah, so there's the selection of a language, or the focus on, hey, can I actually get stuff done working in a given language really isn't important. Unless you have, like, some very focused industry specialty that you're interested in, which I kind of did. Um, 
so I took maybe a very difficult career route, um, but I wanted to develop applications and systems that could help people uh, operate more effectively, which, um, I mean, that's a pretty broad uh, topic. It's their move. They've offered a draw. It's still their move. Depending what they do, I might just agree, but I have the bishop pair. How much time is left on the tournament clock? 11 minutes. You know, that's a good question. And if there weren't IP law concerns, I could answer that for you. Yeah, okay, fine, we'll take the draw. Yeah, so, yeah, currently I work um, doing systems integration um, for very complex software systems. The sort of stuff that they can't outsource to India. Um, because there's just too much communication required to actually implement it all. And it, they need it done correctly. So this is the sort of thing that will be done in the U.S. Oh, nice. All right. So yeah, there's, I guess, the field of uh, everything involving a computer is ever-expanding. Um, and some things have to be done domestically, and some things um, can be outsourced. And that's always in flux, too. Like, as much as I say that like the stuff I'm doing could never be outsourced, maybe someday it could. And I'd have to look for uh, a different sort of thing to work on. Uh, that's kind of the reality is that, like, even in the industry, you're constantly having to learn stuff. Um, either that, or you're just not doing uh, a demanding position. You're not doing real science if you're not learning. All right, so. Come on, queen. Come on, queen e6. All right, it's not going to happen, is it? Uh, I'm not sure what just happened here, but it looks nice. Um, so yeah, some software developers have open source hobby projects. I have way too many of them, and there's a couple of them that I wouldn't mind giving away, um, to other folks who like just working on software as a hobby. 
Like there's this old Linux 3D chess program that I found the source code for on SourceForge. I just copied it into GitHub and updated the build script this morning. Um, I don't know if it builds on Windows or not, but the screenshots for Linux from SourceForge look pretty cool. So if you want some awesome 3D pieces, and um, feel free to use that. I think it's all open source licensed. Um, subtle. All right, so uh, if that's something you want to collaborate on or just work on, I could maybe help you with it. I know we've been trying to encourage Zug to um, open source some of his projects just so that like recruiters will see, hey, here's a guy who did something pretty awesome. Um, like his uh, voice command chess thing was pretty awesome. Like recruiters will look at open source projects and contact people, uh, whether they want to be contacted or not. Um, now there is this like made the buyer beware sort of thing where the folks who just contact random people on GitHub with random opportunities, how good do you think the opportunities really are if the person's just going to GitHub and just sending random emails to people they don't know? I don't know. It's an open question. <laughs> the type of pawn chain that I have here. This one, yeah. Back in middle school, I used to like seeing how many I could get lined up in a diagonal. Um, if I could get like three or more, I was always happy with that. But I would shoot for as many as I could. Because it's difficult for opponent's pieces to maneuver around the pawn chain. Alright, we're going to pre-move pawn takes knight. Okay, so I can't draw arrows and pre-move at the same time, which is kind of unfortunate. But Pawn Takes Knight is pre-moved. There it is. There we go. I don't know if there's enough time on the tournament clock for me to get any points from this game. Three minutes? Yeah, that's not enough. Not unless the opponent resigns or plays in a timely fashion. Um, so we could just, I don't know, so I could take there, but I'm more interested in preventing counterplay right now. Yep, so we're going to bring both rooks out. If we can't win, um, on the clock then we could just win a war of attrition. Just demonstrate to the opponent that they have no attacking chances and hope that they resign before the clock run the tournament clock expires. So if I could just trade as many pieces as possible, this would should demonstrate to the opponent that they cannot win. Um, conversely, they want to keep pieces on the board to preserve any sort of winning chances. Okay, we set up a mate threat. If they play g5, we actually have checkmate. No, we don't. But we want a rook for a bishop. <sighs> so they're going to wait it out. 
or not. Um, this is what I mean by war of attrition. Let's see if they're interested in conceding or if they want to play to the bitter end. There we go. And we take the point home. All right, so two, 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 three. All right, we finally scored um, a bonus point um, once we stopped going berserk, except for the last game where our opponent played queen h4, which was kind of sporting of them. All right, nice. Um, so we have a challenge again. We're, we're going to decline that. Oh, we have no challenges. Um, I wonder, we're in 21st place. Maybe if the top 20 players all get kicked out simultaneously, we could win this thing. Let's find out. Five, four, three, two, one. Do we make... Oh, we didn't make the podium. No fanfare either. That's just a browser bug on my end. That's probably not Lee Chess's fault. That's probably just my browser. But dot 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 dot. All right. Yeah. Uh, should we play a couple fast games and then call it? All right. Uh, F four. All right, d4, takes, queen takes. Nobody suspects the anti Fred or whatever I'm going to call that. Um, Boom, headshot. There we go. Yes, we scored a win against, oh, 2100. Not bad. All right. Yo. Of course, now I'm playing the good moves. Go figure, right? Gotta make. I'm trying to play moves that'll force my opponent to think. And in general, it seems my opponents love playing fast, even if that means not thinking before moving. Um. All right, we're sacking. No, this isn't a sack. I thought it was. It's not. Shit. I messed up. They messed up too. Well, that was exciting. Huzzah! All right. Boom headshot. All right, what's my rating? I'm 2100 again. 
Wait, that's my blitz rating. Where is my bullet rating? 2167. All right, we'll take it. Black just vented in Nav. Oh, shit. You saw him. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, white is sus on leechess.org. <laughs> All right. Uh, how many more should... Oh, interesting. I don't want your bishop. Okay, maybe I want it now. Bam! Headshot. <laughs> okay, well, that was fun. Oh, right. All right, I tried to get opportunistic. It didn't completely work there. Uh, unfortunately. Check this out. Um, all right, that's just a free rook. And they ruined my awesome tactic. I was going to play rook e8 and then bishop g7 checkmate. They won't even let me do it. <sighs> I'm playing him along this way too much. I know, it's, it's definitely the meme. I noticed that somebody observed, hey, this game was released two years ago. How come it's so popular all of a sudden? I think the answer is that like people are online a lot more than they used to be. So go figure that an online game would become popular in the year that everybody's online. Um, but yeah, that's why like uh, it, it might be a meme of a game in terms of like the theory being kind of solved for the settings that you set by default. Um, I know Matt with the Game Theory channel published a video explaining here's how you win as the imposter. And of course for the SEO purposes you have to throw in the words how you win every time and that's just not true but um, here's how you maximize your winning chances every time. Sure. Um, And the answer consists of mostly common sense measures. But there was one interesting point he made. Oops. All right, we're getting mated, probably. Maybe. I don't know. Maybe not. But yeah, deception isn't necessarily about what's communicated. It can also be about things that aren't communicated. Which I thought was clever. Oh shit. <laughs> Alright, well. Alright, Sarah Nina. Excellently played. Yeah. Oh, they want a rematch. Sure. That game was ridiculous. You always have chess as a distraction. Yeah. Six, five, four, three, two. All right, they moved. We're going to pretend that we know this opening.
I don't know if they're falling for it. Pretty sure they don't believe that I know this. And they'd be correct. This is why we practice. Every game is a learning opportunity. Yep, yep, yep. Well spotted. Yeah, my mouse slipped there. Bishop c8 actually is the best move. Alright, uh, how many moves until I concede this? Alright, we concede. Well played. Nicely done. Alright, uh, turns out I can't play memes. I have to actually try. So we'll try against the 2100, see if we can play some good moves. Um, no, I, f uh, f I guess feel free to challenge. Um, I guess like either bullet or blitz would be fine. Thirty-three, thirty-two, thirty-one, thirty, twenty-nine. All right, I'm gonna refill my water. All right, did I disconnect or something? Like, what happened here? I did not disconnect. Okay. Well, score one for me. Um, all right, here we get a game against Hysterics. All right, good luck. Okay, we're playing the eight pawns attack. Um, which I just invented now and named after the fact that I push all the pawns. There we go.
want to play faster. Yep, so I'm not super great at bullet. <laughs> I pretend that I am, but um, probably need to play some good moves. This was unwise. All right, fine. Hmm. <laughs> so my secret that I'm not the greatest bullet player is out. Everybody knows that there's so much I don't know. Oh, right. Uh, I messed up. Yeah, there's nothing I can do about that. I need to come up with an opening against that. Hmm. Yeah, I think a blitz might work better for both of us. because I'm not super great at bullet. I know sometimes I do bullet to try to, like, 
just play silly moves and not think about what I'm doing. Um, but then when it gets competitive, like, then this sort of nonsense happens. Or I just continue playing BS moves the whole time. Um, and the games just, like, are super weird. Uh, let's take here. So I just get a different dynamic when, like, I get challenged. And, like, I actually have to try to win. Uh, instead of just shuffling pieces and seeing fun shapes can occur. Uh, okay. Yeah, this actually just promotes the pawn outright. All right, here we go, 3-0. <sighs> so now I can actually smell the roses a little bit while we play. Uh, I'm going to continue playing this then. Um, and then here I typically follow, what do I do? This, I think. And then we Venko it up. Although E4 hasn't been played, so this isn't... Accurate. Ah, oh, shit. I messed this up. Oh, dear. Well, that's not great. Um... How in the world did I miss this opening up? Do I have to play knight f6 before playing b5? I have not played tournaments in a very long time, and it is definitely showing. Alright, what? Uh, I'm sorry. Come sai? Uh... Because, uh, so the reason I've been playing so quickly is because I tend to flag. Um, so that's why I'm playing faster than I'm, um, than is responsible. Uh, yeah, let's develop this. That just because I play at such a rapid pace doesn't mean that both players need to, unless you're comfortable playing, like, the moves as quickly as you are playing them. I'm just saying, like, in the last minute, I cannot execute the moves fast enough to avoid flagging. Um... So that's why I continue blitzing things way too fast here.
That's a good move. I debated bishop d3 for a while, but I think this is my better response, although I don't know what next to do. Um... Hmm. All right. I think that knight gets in the way of the attack. Otherwise, it would be a strong move. Um... It's important to use all the pieces. Check. 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 Always check. It might be mate. There we go. All right, we're going to play e4. Uh, Caro, is it? Switching to the pan of uh, Finnick. Hey, I'm actually playing a real opening for once, or at least trying to. <laughs> oh, man. Um... Hmm. Okay. Uh, we're going to abandon open theory, opening theory and play this. I'm sure there is some move, and I'm almost certain this is not it. Um, but this looks too intriguing to pass up. Note that this is protected. So I can afford the time for this move. Yeah. Um, now, whether I actually do bishop f4 is a different matter, but it looks tempting. Um, it can get me a piece onto d6, which has got to be okay no matter how you spin it. Um, yeah, this is the position that confused me. 
so I think I want my knight on d6. So this is not check, but it's still threatening. This is the thing I was thinking about, but then there's this. Yeah, so we take here now. This is kind of hanging. I'm not sure exactly how hanging it is. But we've got a pawn. And this is protected again. Uh, uh, my king might be a bit suspect, but... Um, you know, we'll just deal with that when the time comes. So to break this pin, I've got to move either my bishop or my queen. Um... Seeing that they have two pieces that this knight is pinned to, I'm more inclined to move the queen than the bishop. Because putting the bishop back here cramps my space. Um, I still want to use both of my rooks, but I don't see good squares for both of them just yet. Okay, we're going to protect the bishop and break the pin. Right, so this... Yeah, it definitely had me concerned. Um, I really don't know what to do about it. I want to have them make a decision about whether they're going to continue attacking my knight or just put their bishop on a useful square. Oh, well, that's a decision. Um... Okay. Hang on, I need to be a little careful. Uh, shit. Had it all planned the entire time. Oh, just kidding. Well, close enough. Oh, nice! <laughs> uh, man, I was thinking more about, like, how do I time this back to, back to the meme that is this uh, activity here? The whole white is sus thing. Yeah, my king's position was extremely suspect, and I got punished. And rightly so. All right. Oh. Whoa, really? Okay. We get to play some esoteric stuff. This is preparing against the king's Indian defense, but then I transpose us to God knows what. Um, which is hopefully okay for me. Hmm. Interesting. Nope, that doesn't do anything. Let's do this. This is a target. This continues being a target. We 
We're just going to organize all our forces toward that point. This continues being... All right. And it has moved. And now that it has moved, um, hopefully there's a new series of things I can do. Is there? I don't know, but hopefully. Um, is this terrible? How bad can it be? So this is the threat, this is the primary threat that I'm trying to get to eventually be a real thing. Um, my opponent declines to allow me to do that. So secondary threat, so we just promote. Um, is it possible? I don't know. We'll find out. Oh, okay. So, yeah, things just got more complicated. Hmm. Interesting. You better believe I'm looking for mate threats this time. I'm not going to fall for a mate threat two games in a row. Alright. <laughs> yeah. Uh, let's see. How about this one? I never claimed I was any good at this opening, but it looks fun to play, right?
I confess I'm a bit curious where this all leads. Um... Okay, we're going to try to develop the pieces this way, I guess. And it's going to be awkward. Um... Nice. Well spotted. And I'm just lucky. I almost took the rook. I almost took the rook. Then I used my 1 minute and 57 seconds to spot a better move than taking the rook. Um... That's why I'm not a scholastic player that I spend time looking for stuff before I move. Not too much time, but it's important to spend at least some time. Uh, okay. I messed up. It's okay. Because I know end games, so I can salvage this somehow. Although I guess I'm on the better end of it, aren't I? Um. Yeah, that got pretty wild. All right. What this time? Hmm. Got to play them all. Pokémon. Oh, right. What? Um, mm -mm. Just trying to make the most effective use of this tempo war that we're having. We're, we're both trying to save a move. I'd like to put my knight on c6. Um, oops, queen h4 is not so bright. I'll save that for another day. Um, another day is coming soon. <laughs> I know it looks like I can't do Queen H4. Certainly looks that way. Um... That does stop me from playing queen h4.
team. All right, queen e4 is not so good for me. Can I spot a better move than queen e4, which would just give away my queen? Well, I found this. Hmm. All right. I made my game difficult, didn't I? Uh, okay. Well, well, well. Um. Well, I have an idea. It's not my worst idea. Um, is the queen trapped? Kind of. Let's say it is. Oh, okay, yeah, there's that move. Um, what do I do now? I know they say a knight on f8 and there's no mate, but not sure if I believe that. Yeah, this position's super strange. Oh, nice. That is beautiful. Well, I have to test the knight f8 theory now, don't I? Oh, well, yeah, I guess that's probably a good move. Maybe I shouldn't hang my queen. Well, that was pretty ridiculous. Yeah. <laughs> what an adventure. All right, what opening this time? How about this one? Okay, I know this isn't an opening, but let's pretend. Nice. That was a well-spotted pawn grab. Um, I thought I had that covered somehow. Uh, I don't. So I'm just two pawns in the red with a really funky structure. And some slight initiative.
Should have done this. Wouldn't have made any difference. Uh, would not have made a difference. All right. We've got the bishop pair, which apparently I'm trying to part with, and I don't know why. Other than my pieces can't find good squares. Um... This is a problem. My position has so many problems right now. Gotta find a square for my piece. Uh, let's push this. Help us, Obi Wan Kenobi. You're our only hope. Let's go, H pawn. Harry the H pawn. Just gotta save the day. But yeah, more realistically, I guess I'm trying to trade into a drawn rook and pawn endgame, if possible. Which does not look very likely at the moment. I thought this might happen. I didn't read this out to see if it was better for me or not. It just looked interesting enough. Of course, there's that. Um, Yeah, no, I admit I'm actually confused the more I look at this. Uh, I might have bluffed my opponent accidentally with my usual bluster. Nice. There we go. Yeah. Um, no, I think the tactics somehow worked out for that knight takes bishop. Um, the key is that you're threatening to skewer my king and rook. Um... Yeah, I don't know. 
I tried to find like some way to justify it, but I think in all the lines you're able to ring, retreat your rook after having taken the bishop. That's my guess. I have to choose where I castle. I think I actually do castle this way. Thought the line with king h2 at the end didn't work. We forgot you could just retreat the rook. Yeah, and my king, yeah. So I think that's, I think you're right. doesn't work does it all right um uh, what do i do to scramble here yeah i don't know hmm is there a way i can hang more pieces than i'm already hanging i think there is
Uh, this could be curious. Oh, shit. I forgot about that. Okay. Hmm, which one? Okay, we'll go back to E4. Just because we're playing E4 doesn't mean we have to play serious openings. <laughs> oh dear. Hmm. Interesting. Oh, right. Of course. Well, um... Yeah, I'm not paying attention, am I? I am not paying enough attention to this game. Okay, finally the square is covered. Um, you know, maybe I just don't want that rook anymore. This is a better way to get rid of it. Somehow I thought I could take this. I cannot, in fact, take that for so many different reasons. Um, well, I almost can now. Um, let's get this developed. Cover the square. So many things are attacked. Um, let's see. <laughs> so if I can get this to move, I can maybe capture that. The timing on my move is really suspect, though. Yeah, my king is still stuck in the middle. I can't just grab a pawn. Um, I 
Okay. <laughs> oh dear. I'm almost in a position to grab that pawn now. Jeez. Let's castle before I get my king murdered. Alright, I missed that. Thankfully I have a response. No, I don't. Just kidding. Ha! Works every time. Alright, but now, um... Yeah, let's pretend that that was okay. Um, I have no idea what's going on. All right. All right. Um, should we call it there? We've had quite a fun, quite a few fun games, um, but I think both of us are distracted somehow. Um, I, for my part, I am super distracted by the fact that like I see notifications of people going live doing Among Us, which uh, yeah, good games. Um. um yeah, so I guess we should do a brief analysis of what happened this last game, as painful as it may be to do so. Um, so this here, that would have been pretty convincing. Um, yeah. Yeah, I think you're right. Yes, definitely. Uh, certainly we've played before. But yeah, this uh, would have been decisive. Like, so my queen's attack, my knight's attack, my king's attack. All right, castle here uh, that you did apparently is a mistake. My bishop g5 is apparently a mistake. Yeah, I have no idea. Like, this is, like, way too complicated. How did we get into this again? How did I get into this? Oh, h4. All right, I was trying to meme it up really hard. Although, um, yeah, here I, I was split between queen d2 and pawn takes pawn. I also considered knight takes, but apparently queen d2 is solid. I thought this was all junk because of the h4 that I'd thrown in, but this gets back into Karokan waters after all. Uh, and then my knight a4. Oh, knight g e2. Okay, this is how I could continue playing my trash. Nice. Yeah, if I ever get this position again, I'll keep that in mind. Um, then, yeah, rook b1 was a wasted move. Apparently, you should bishop d3 and try to castle. Bishop d3 is fine because uh, I was afraid of this, but I can just king f1 and I'm okay. So, yeah. Um, my bishop g5. Yeah, this is just way too messy. Uh, here's our eval graph, so... It's because of this sort of thing that I'm like, you know, we probably should call it before. Um, we have a 123 average sun upon loss. This is how you know it's me playing. Yep, that's my signature. I drop more than a pawn every turn. <laughs> uh, yeah. Oh, nice. Well done. Yeah, advanced search is pretty good on the site. You're able to find games with a given opponent. Actually, I could just search for your player profile and just get the cross table that way, too. But yeah, we've played some Atomic in the past. Yeah. Yeah. 
anyhow, uh, yeah, it's been a good session. I uh, see, even though we've maintained a strong viewership throughout, I'm still going to wrap it up here because my voice is tired. And we've got chess tomorrow morning with Shogi Harbor. So stay tuned for that. I think she's going to be playing with Japanese tutor. Should be pretty fun. So yeah, uh, thanks everyone for watching. Um, and go observe other streamers uh, who happen to be live streaming. I don't happen to know any of them who are up at the moment. But yeah, take a look. Have some fun. Have a good night.